Ladies and gentlemen, let us proceed to point... Mesdames et messieurs, nous allons passer au point 7, débat sur la crise alimentaire. Nous avons le plaisir d'accueillir dans cette session plusieurs hôtes de marque, le commissaire à l'agriculture, tout d'abord, M. Wojciechowski, ainsi que Mme Marlène Mortler, députée européenne, Zilda Gomes, présidente de la Commission pour les ressources naturelles au sein du CDR, et aussi M. Kabelki, rapporteur pour le CDR. Je vais sans tarder donner la parole durant dix minutes au commissaire à l'agriculture. Monsieur le commissaire, vous avez la parole. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs. Merci de m'avoir convié à cette session plénière du Comité des Régions. C'est un plaisir pour moi de débattre avec vous des défis que nous aurons à relever en matière de sécurité alimentaire compte tenu du contexte difficile dans lequel nous évoluons. Demain, il y aura trois ans. Ce sera le troisième anniversaire de la prise de fonction de la commission von der Leyen. Nous avons commencé à travailler avec Mme von der Leyen sur différents dossiers il y a trois ans et le changement climatique, les événements climatiques qui touchent l'agriculture constituent l'un des dossiers les plus importants. Il faut que l'agriculture soit rendue plus résiliente au changement climatique et puisse mieux affronter les conséquences de ce changement climatique. That's, uh, first of all, a pandemic uh, uh, crisis with uh, many consequences for our life, for, for our economy, including agriculture, including the uh, situation of our farmers. And now, from the February uh, this year, uh, unprecedented crisis uh, caused by the Russian aggression against Ukraine and provoked illegal aggression Russia, Russia's aggression uh, against Ukraine with uh, consequences for the food security at the global level. And uh, this, the, they are the, the, the main challenges for the, for the uh, European Union, for all of us, and also for the global, global community. Uh, I can say that uh, the food security in European Union, we, we have ensured food security. And we need to be thankful for our farmers, for, uh, uh, for our food producers, that in these very difficult circumstances, uh, the food security was ensured. The, there was not uh, interruptions of uh, food supply to the, in the European Union during this, this crisis. Uh, European Union is uh, the, the biggest food exporter in the, in the world at the global level. It's uh, uh, very um, important to mention that uh, that's, uh, no, 2020 we exported food. Uh, the value of ex food export from European Union was 184 billion euro. Import 122 billion euro. It shows that that's positive balance is 62 million, billion euro. And there is no risk for food security in the European Union in short term, short uh, term. But to have the food security in longer perspective, we need to strengthen our support for, 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 for our farmers, for, uh, for um, our agriculture. Uh, a, few, a few words about the situation with Ukraine. That at the beginning of the war, that's uh, in March, end of February, March. The main problem was uh, the main, no, not the main, but for, for, the, for the food security, the main challenge was to reopen uh, export of grain from Ukraine. Before the war, Ukraine exported about the five, six million ton, tons of grain. And uh, the, uh, after the, the, the beginning of the war, the 
uh, export was almost fully blocked, that uh, only 200,000 tons of, of uh, grain was exported in March. But thanks to our initiative, Solidarity Lanes, thanks to support of this, this export by Poland, by Romania, to the, to the uh, Baltic ports, uh, that's, uh, the export was, uh, month by month, was increased. And uh, then now we have um, the, the scale of export is uh, like before the war. Of course, there is uh, last time the initiative, Black Sea Road initiative, UN initiative was also helpful. But the role of the European Union solid solidarity lines is, is, is very important. I'd like to thank for, for especially for the countries which uh, supported to, to the solidarity lanes, the, the mainly uh, Poland, Romania, that it was very, 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 very important to ensure food security at the global level. But f what about the future? I'd like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to, to say you a few, a few informations for the last, uh, you are the first, the first forum in which I share this information because they are new and I received uh, results of the agricultural census in, in European Union. And we can compare the situation in, in agriculture 2010-2020 during one decade. And what are the processes which we should uh, uh, analyze very, very carefully and to, uh, to uh, uh, give answer what, what to do with this in the, in the future. The first, we lost three million farms during one decade. The number of, of farms in European Union 2010 was 12 million, now we have 9 million. We lost three million farms during one decade. This is about the 80 farms per day. 80, farms, 80 farmers in European Union each day <coughs> resign from their the farming. Uh, the, 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 this process is uh, different across the member states, not everywhere is the same, but, but generally, uh, maybe this is only one country, which is Czech Republic, where the number of farms was in, increased, but in the rest of, of the countries was decreased more or less, more or less, but everywhere. Uh, this is one, one uh, important data. The next, uh, uh, we lost also the agricultural land. Not, maybe not, in percentage is uh, not, not big, 1%, but 1% is one and a half million hectares, which is also, also that we, we, we should to be concerned about, about this. Uh, livestock farming, that, uh, you know, there are different opinions that uh, we, uh, some, there are some opinions that we have too, too much intensive, uh, too, 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 too big uh, meat production, too many uh, livestock farms. But uh, animal production, uh, sustainable production, is very important for sustainable development of, of agriculture, rural areas. During one decade, we lost 7% of animal production. The number of, of uh, livestock units, this is the category, statistic category, one livestock unit is, is the, uh, one cow, about the f five of six pigs, more than 200 uh, uh, chicken. And generally, the uh, livestock, number of livestock units was reduced 7%, from 122 million to 113. And the situation is also different across the member states, but uh, we can observe the process from one hand, uh, concentration of production. We lost a lot of small farms uh, with animal production. Where the, the, the number of the farms with intensive, like industrial production, was increased in last decade. But it is not good for the productivity, because the production, general production, is, is, is less than, than, than uh, 10 years ago. And big challenge, which is the uh, uh, ge generational renewal, maybe uh, lack of generational renewal. The average age of the European farmers 10 years ago was 55 and a half year, and now it's uh, 57. And one third of uh, European farmers 
least from these 9 million European farmers, 3 million they are in age 65 plus. They are farmers without the perspective, without the successors, the majority of them. And we need to, to concentrate our, our effort to improve generational renewal. We have, of course, uh, uh, the instrument in the common agriculture policy, which is uh, uh, support from the first pillar and the second pillar to support young farmers, but this, this is not enough. Uh, we need, in the agriculture policy in the future, we need to strengthen our instrument to uh, make the farmers work more economically safety because the, during the permanent crisis, whole time the crisis, the risk to be a farmer is too high. This is one of the reasons that young people don't like to, to be the farmer, to continue the uh, generational tradition in, in farming. This is, this is one uh, issue. The second is condition on life in rural areas. And this is very important also for our cooperation with Committee of Region. Mr. President, because we have the, we mentioned also in our uh, long-term vision for, for rural areas, but we need to uh, respect fully this principle from the Article 174 uh, of the treaty that the uh, rural areas, also post-industrial areas and, and uh, outmost regions should be treated with, with the preference and we need to pay more attention for, 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 for this policy and to improve condition of life in rural areas. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner, for your insights. Okay. Now it's my pleasure to give the floor to the member of the European Parliament, uh, member of the Agri Committee, Marlene Mortler. You have the floor for 10 minutes. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident. President Cordero, thank you very much. Commissioner Wojciechowski, Ms. Gomez, Mr. Kalbetsky, I am delighted that you extended this kind invitation to me to speak to you today at the Committee of the Region Plenary. Together with your uh, rapporteur, Kalbetsky, I had an excellent exchange in November. And I was also very pleased that Mr. Kalbetsky was able to pay us a visit yesterday in the Agricultural Committee. I think speaking with each other as opposed to over each other is a good basis for making good decisions and solutions that can be implemented. Our citizens want to and should be able to have a better understanding of Europe. And Mr. Kalbetsky and I discovered that we have the same objective – and that is to support our farmers. And I've understood the Commissioner has the same objective too. Commissioner Wojciechowski, Mr Kalbetsky and I believe that we shouldn't just wait to act until a crisis crops up. Europe needs to be better prepared for different crises. European food production must become a strategic cornerstone for the European Union. And European and global supply chains should be made more robust and more crisis resilient. Global food security is not something that we can take for granted. The COVID crisis and the huge impact that the brutal war in the Ukraine has had have made a lot of people poorer. On top of that, we've seen increasing food prices, increasing energy prices as well. And this means that uh, survival is becoming more difficult for people throughout the world. The number of people who are uh, undernourished or malnourished in the world is increasing steadily. The availability and affordability of nutritious and safe food is massively compromised today. The percentage of the global population that cannot afford healthy food is at 30 percent. Now, on top of that, we also have to factor in the fact that uh, the world's population is increasing. At the beginning of the 1950s, the global population was around 2.5 billion. 
we've now passed 8 billion people in the world. And so the demand for food and for biomass continues to increase. At the same time, land and water available is becoming even more scarce. So the question we need to put ourselves today and in the future is that we have more people and less available space. So how are we going to provide enough food in a sustainable way? Sustainable food security is a huge challenge, but in principle it is possible to achieve this. When we look at uh, the climate, the environment issues we face, of course agriculture and food is part of the problem, but on the other hand it's also part of the solution. And the Green Deal's objectives can be best achieved in the agricultural sector, whether we're talking about food production or CO2 reductions. Blanket reduction targets when it comes to plant protection and generalised bans, I don't think that's the right approach to take. We need to be able to reduce the use of these products through innovation. Plant protection means consumer protection. Take a look at what happened in Sri Lanka. We can learn from that and learn just how important and valuable the work of our farmers is. In April of 2021, the Sri Lankan government decided to ban artificial fertiliser and plant protection products. A year on, we can see that this experiment was a failure. First off, because of the... Uh, decreased harvests, the farmers went bankrupt, the economy was soon in ruins and then the government followed suit. This example shows us that food security contributes to a stable society. So having enough food means that we'll have fewer conflicts. I think improving yields is central to climate and environmental protection. These aren't contradictions in terms. We need more diversity when it comes to our fields and when it comes to what we eat. This is something that would be good for the environment and for plant protection, as well as for a balanced diet. Commissioner, I think it's high time that we have a comprehensive European protein strategy. The goals of the new EU fertiliser strategy should be able to be implemented in the mid and long term as well and be effective. Organic and mineral fertilisers as well as new for food sources are essential for healthy harvests. Without new technologies, sustainable agriculture and uh, nutritious food production is not going to be possible. So I'm calling on the develop for the development of new breeding techniques, digital technologies, agroforest systems, vertical farming, precision agriculture and artificial intelligence. These all form part of a good toolbox. Instead of completely condemning new breeding technologies, I think we're better off having a discussion about the goals we're working towards and which ones promote sustainability best. Logistics, transport and storage, these will also be crucial to a well-functioning supply chain. Food waste on the one hand and on the other hand food speculation need to be highlighted as well. And this is something that I think is really, really important. Europe also needs to be more aware of the international dimension of its agricultural policy. The Green Deal cannot lead to more food imports. If we take a look at what's happened in China, for example, like rarely before, China has started to stock up uh, India, for its part, has uh, stopped some exports. So, ladies and gentlemen, we do not want to kill our farmers. That's what the Indian ambassador told me on a visit to Strasbourg. And indeed, we in Europe need our farmers. We need them more than ever. They need to be recognised and they need a fair framework conditions throughout the world. So that's who we're fighting for. That's who I'm fighting for, because these are the people who provide us on a daily basis with high quality raw materials for a diverse uh, nutrition. They're valuable 
work cannot be questioned because of blanket bans and one-sided campaigns. So let's promote this wonderful asset that we have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your intervention. Now it is my pleasure to give the floor to Isilda Gomes, President of the Commission NAT. She's the head of the NAT Committee here in the Committee of the Regions. You have five minutes. Thank you very much, Chair. And I will take advantage of those five minutes. Chair, guests, colleagues, food security is again at the top of our political agenda today. The European Union is self-sufficient as regards food, but we are facing an increase in prices of foodstuffs and energy products, and that is contributing to a spiraling inflation. So just to give you uh, some figures, I think it's always better with figures. In France, Uh, food prices are up 15.4%. Uh, pa- uh, bread and cereals have increased 16.6%. In the EU, uh, we're at the highest uh, level since 1997, January 1997. The highest bread prices were in Hungary, up 66% in August 2022. Then Lithuania, 33%, Estonia and Slovakia, um, both are at 32% increase. These figures hide devastating realities across the EU. Poverty is increasing. Poor families with low incomes are those who suffer most. They have to spend more of their budget on basic foodstuffs such as bread. If we, we need to act urgently to make sure we help those citizens in need and using all tools at our disposal. So, what are those tools that we have? First of all, market regulation. Farmers and consumers in the EU need stability. They need price stability. If we can't control uh, prices, well, We'll only manage to do that if the EU develops sound instruments to regulate the market. So, for example, that's been uh, done in other areas. But we know that without that, we have speculation. And we need to reduce the distance between production and consumers. That reduces uh, vulnerabilities and uh, not doing so harms natural resources. The EU and the CAP need to strengthen local food systems, as insisted upon by the committee. And that means developing local sustainable food systems. Doing that is the best way to ensure good quality foodstuffs for our citizens and a good, uh, a worthy um, income for our farmers. Uh, the use of biofuels has to be interrupted on this front. We need to reduce our um, dependence on certain inputs such as pesticides and fertilizers. That will help us uh, increase the resilience of our uh, food production system. We need to denounce uh, the instrumentalization of war in Ukraine, which uh, represents a new political offense as well against uh, uh, our strategy as a whole. We've seen disinformation, false news about uh, the uh, strategy focusing on Uh, the Green Pact and food uh, sectors and promoting resilience in those sectors in the EU. We need to take a long-term view to make sure that our foodstuffs are as uh, sustainable as possible, that we support our economy and our autonomy and our resilience at EU level and at regional levels. And this means we have to uh, develop alternative farm, farming systems, which uh, provides incentives for uh, biodiverse uh, production systems that are resilient, sustainable, and, and socially fair. We have an important role to play in the transition. In fact, I think we're fundamental. 
perhaps uh, together uh, we can make sure that we're no longer losing eight uh, farmers per day, as uh, we've heard from the Commissioner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isilda, for taking the floor. Vaughan, and we will have, uh, as you all know, we have an opinion to be voted, presented and voted during this session that has everything to do with what we've been talking about. So it is my pleasure to give the floor to the rapporteur of that opinion, our member, Piotr Kalbecki. You have the floor for five minutes for presenting the opinion, and then we'll move on to the debate. And luckily, we will have Commissioner and MEP to uh, be with us during the debate. Rapporteur, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. <coughs> President, Mr. Deputy of EU Parliament, Mr. Commissar, uh, President Nat Commission, all colleagues, thank you for giving me voice, and especially thank you for entrusting me preparation of the opinion about the food security. Although I'm not vaccinated today, but to be better understanding, let me speak in Polish. Panie i panowie, chciałbym... Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank everyone who helped me draft this opinion. Let me thank the uh, chairman of the NAT Commission, all the members of the Commission, my EPL members or EPP members. Let me thank the Secretariat and the experts, especially small and medium-sized um, farmers who helped us. Let me thank uh, uh, Madame Mertler, who's a um, farmer from Bavaria. I'm a farmer too. So it, I think it helped us to work together. Let me thank the cabinet members of the Commissioner Wojciechowski. We consulted our opinion with them as well. It's a, an opinion about something really important. We just heard about it. It's about uh, food security. Well, it was uh, in spring this year the, when the Commission uh, published a communication on it. That was the Commission's response to the uh, war in Ukraine. But as practically all people before me said, there were reasons to talk about uh, food security even before many of them, it, it wasn't just the war that provoked our discussion. When we look at the past 15 years of, pri of food prices on markets, we see that it's not the first crisis, it's the third one. So there's something wrong with the uh, European um, agricultural policy. And please note that our opinion is a voice that is, again, calling for peace for Ukraine. We have to do our best to stabilize the situation in Europe by giving an unequivocal response to Putin's regime, to what he's doing. And please bear in mind that we are actually having the 19th um, anniversary of this big famine in Ukraine. Soviet Russia used, they didn't use weapons then, they just imposed hunger on Ukraine and killed five million people. So we have to do anything to keep Europe safe. I will not discuss details of this opinion. It has 96 uh, paragraphs. All of them are important. Thank you to all political groups. All of you were constructive. Let me thank Christoph Klerschu, Roberto Zambetti, and all others, everyone who joined that discussion. And I think, thanks to them, this is a great opinion. We'll continue this discussion. Let me invite you to Torun, because on the 2nd and uh, 3rd of June next year, 
we will organize a meeting of the NAT Commission, but there will also be a conference on food security. Let's hope that the farmers, because they are the producers here, they guarantee our food. I hope their situation will improve. I hope there will no longer be price problems. I hope we'll make sure that this value chain from farm to fork is safe. I hope we'll make pro um, production costs stable. You know, my my brother is a farmer, and I can see suddenly fertilizers uh, got three times more expensive. Fortunately, prices have fallen by now, but you need security here. Farmers plan their production years in advance. They cannot react ad hoc if prices fluctuate. So thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, let's open the floor for the debate. First, I would like to give the floor to our colleague, Fernando López Miras, for two minutes. Thank you very much, Chair, Commissioner, members of the committee. We're very aware of how important it is to guarantee food security. For the first time in history, uh, we haven't gone hungry during a pandemic. But that shouldn't be taken as a given that it'll always be like that. We have the pandemic, we have the war in Ukraine, which are both showing us that we have to make decisions that ensure greater self-sufficiency and making sure that we're self-sufficient across the entirety of the food chain. Prices have continued to increase over the last year uh, because of the price of energy, because of the price of fertilizers, and because of inputs in general. And that, of course, has an impact on everyone, including those who are most vulnerable. We need a sustainable and competitive farm system. We need to renew our production system that... Uh, is the prime uh, th that is at the core of the cap. That's only possible with water, of course. We need to make sure that uh, the food system is produced in a fair way, and farmers need us to listen. This is a key um, f field to ensure sustainability within the EU. The Green Pact is absolutely essential to ensure this food security at the same time. Uh, we also need to look at what's happening uh, in terms of lesser food production. We need to work hard, though it's not easy, to, to achieve all of our objectives and make the changes that we need. We trust that the EU uh, will make use of all its tools that it's uh, at its disposable, make sure things are flexible enough and that we can um, help the farmers, producers, and consumers. The new that won't be enough. And to do that, we need to continue to work on this, especially given the current economic context. We need to lean on our experience and, where possible, use that experience and learn from it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now the floor goes to our colleague, Joke Schaufliger. You have the floor for two minutes. Thank you, President. Ninety years after Holodomor, the Kremlin is again using food as a weapon. The Russian aggression leads to rising costs for energy and fertilizers, which is threatening our food production. And next year could be even more challenging in terms of availability of fertilizers. At regional and local level, we are doing our best at home to grow more food and to guarantee our food security by strengthening local food systems. This is a good way, a good way to provide for quality food for our citizens and decent income for our farmers. But at the European level, we should be very cautious not to make law proposals that could cut European food production and increase farmers' costs. Maintaining quality food production in Europe is not only in farmers' interest, but also in consumers' interest. This more important now than ever. Dear Commissioner, what would be the consequences of the Green Deal and farm-to-fork strategy, especially 
from a farming perspective and agri-food chain perspective. After all this legislation will be implemented at local and regional level, it has an impact on our territories. We need a comprehensive territorial impact assessment. How much we will produce after these policy measures have been put in place. The European Committee of the Regions could provide valuable support in this exercise because we have our territorial impact assessment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Guido Milano, the floor is yours for four minutes. Grazie, grazie, Presidente. Thank you, Chairman. We need to declare war on war. I believe that everything which is happening on the European market is not born out of a shortage of food, but uh, of speculation. And we see it every day. The markets are not controlled, and that's why there's this uh, price hike. And this uh, leads to fairly scary effects. Uh, I was baffled by the figures mentioned by the Commissioner. Since 2010 to 2020, three million fewer companies. Uh, if we want to think about the future, we, we need to dwell on that figure. And, Commissioner, those were the companies which were probably uh, on the margins of the implementation of our CAP. And I, I really think we need to give some thought to the future implementation. And it would be interesting to see whether these three million companies are micro companies. Our committee a couple of months ago adopted uh, a, an opinion on state aid to agricultural holdings and companies. And in that opinion, we state that small and medium-sized enterprises, as defined by European policies, in agriculture are actually large companies. And I think some thought needs to be given to that. An agricultural SME is not the same as an SME in other industries. Uh, a manufacturing SME, an industry SME, would be a large agricultural company. Uh, 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 and I think we need to give some thought to that. And maybe we need to have a new category of companies, micro-companies. Those are probably, probably the ones that are, are making up the three million that have closed over the past 10 years. And when it comes to uh, the biodiversity strategy, the Green Deal, the Farm to Fork strategy, it's the micro enterprises that implement all of this. I mean, of course, large agricultural companies are also involved, but most of it is implemented by micro enterprises and we need to speak plainly and there are people who are trying to put a break on the policies that the commission is developing uh, which we supported and others have supported and, and we need to make sure that people can't put a break on this and the local and regional authorities are successful in implementing all of this, and therefore we need to take account of their needs, the needs of our municipalities in our regions. And when it comes to public procurement, if in a school or in a hospital, there's a canteen, uh, that we should apply the same public procurement rules to that as we do to major infrastructure works. If the legislative constraints uh, are there, and if all of that is so complex, then it doesn't work. 
And we need to make sure that public procurement can act more swiftly, that we can have short circuits, local systems, so that the market is brought closer to the consumer. Nicola Caputo, you have the floor for three minutes. Grazie. Thank you, President, Commissioner. According to a recent report, because of the high prices, an Italian uh, is now spending less on the quantity and the quality of food, and that's the same across the EU. And there's a food social gap now, and young persons in particular have reduced their spending more than older people. And poorer uh, segments of society have reduced their shopping more uh, than the affluent segments. And this is affecting the whole agri-food business, uh, in particular in rural areas. And many companies are going to the wall uh, and are running and operating at a loss. And we can't waste any time. We need to improve the purchasing power of our European citizens, and we need to make sure that we can maintain production so that these uh, agricultural holdings can be saved. Uh, we also have to contend with climate change, uh, and that has an impact uh, on the profitability of agricultural holdings. And there uh, is not really any propension uh, to insuring uh, for risk, and there is therefore no income stabilization tool. Uh, and we think that insurance policies for farmers is something that needs to be looked at. Uh, these agricultural companies are affected by the high prices for raw materials and uh, currently these instruments play a marginal role and from a strategic point of view that is a mistake. Of course we need to take account of member state specificities but uh, if there is any issue of implementation uh, we need to uh, look at it because it takes away resources from the first and second uh, pillar. We need to make sure that we can encourage short production chains and that we produce health and seasonal food. And we need a new culture of food. We need to make sure that under public procurement we uh, uh, give precedence uh, to short-circuit foods uh, for uh, supplying canteens uh, in schools and hospitals. And we need to make sure that the necessary incentives are in place. If there is a food crisis, then we need to act immediately so that we can put in place measures uh, that uh, can start straight away. In March, there was a crisis reserve. There was a 500 million euro uh, may, amount made available, and member states were also allowed to depart from certain investment obligations undertaken under 2020. But if there is a food shortage, we need to move uh, away from our dependence on fossil fuels, pesticides and fertilizers, and we need to provide specific measures for certain markets, and we need to make sure that we can have a liquidity injection also by having direct advances paid out. Member Marco Marsilio, you have the floor for two and a half minutes. Thank you, and welcome, dear Commissioner, also on behalf of the ECR Group. Now, in spite of the destabilization of the agricultural markets and an increase in prices because of the Russian aggression in Ukraine, the EU's food security is not at risk, and you pointed this out yourself. And this is because we are self-sufficient when it comes to the main food products, even though vulnerable uh, families have reduced their spending on food. It's important to implement a long-term initiative so that we can guarantee food security in the EU. We need to have a transition towards more sustainable system, and this is a priority so that we can have food sovereignty. And we need to make sure that we put in place projects uh, to this end, in particular at local and regional level. We need to also promote research so that we can make sure uh, that uh, food production is also resilient to climate change. And we need to rethink uh, organic farming and make more use of it. We need to move away from the use of chemical substances which have a negative impact on the environment. And, of course, we have an important role to play. Uh, we need to make sure that we can react to these major changes. It's the local and regional authorities that will have to become active first and uh, foremostly. Now, uh, labelling on the front of the package is something that we are critical of. We don't think that the Nutri-Score system gives reliable and right information to consumers, and it unjustly penalises 
products from the Mediterranean diet, which are healthy and balanced products, and we hope that this is not implemented at European level. Then uh, I would also like to touch upon synthetic foods. That's very topical, and uh, we do need to speak to this. Synthetic uh, products do not contribute to our citizens' health. They are not environmentally friendly. They use more water and resources than traditional products. And synthetic foods also would limit the choice of citizens and their nutritional uh, choices, and it would uh, promote the interests of a number uh, of Uh, producers, large producers over others, and this would cause a rift in, in the extraordinary link that exists between food, culture uh, and tradition. Now, the agricultural world, uh, the scientific uh, world too, is deploying a lot of efforts, in particular so that farming can continue in rural areas, and this to fight off the advent of synthetic foods. Now you have the floor for two minutes. Panie komisarzu, panie przewodniczący, dziękuję za głos. Szanowni... Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me the floor. I don't want to refer to everything that has already been agreed. It's bad, it can be even worse. Let's hope it won't get much, much worse. During the energy crisis, we have also the food crisis unfolding, and we see a specter of lack of food in the world looming large. I hope it won't affect Europe so much. I just wanted to draw attention to the following aspects of the financing of the common European uh, agricultural policy will cost us 370 billion euros. At present, we are spending about 4% of the EU GDP. Do you think, Commissioner, this is enough? And do, does the Commission take into account extending the budget for the CAP? In the European Union, we've got about two million hectares of soil which has been excluded from agricultural production. Now you're planning of introducing agricultural production, so the area of um, land would increase and this would contribute to increasing food production. Another issue that I wanted to raise. Now people are investing in agriculture. We, I have a question. Do you want to trigger the crisis reserve of the European Union so that the European Union would be able to ensure, ensure long-time food security for its citizens? And I think that the Green Deal will need to be revised both at the EU level and at the national level. Do you have any ideas here, any potential for change? And finally... We do everything to have more food, but at the same time, we're wasting food. The EU has committed to limit food waste by half by 2023. Will you introduce any programs? Thank you. Power for one minute, for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Mr. Thank you for this comprehensive opinion on what is a very important and pressing topic. Fortunately, as already highlighted, the EU is not currently at risk of food shortages. However, this does not mean that we are insulated against the effects of food price inflation and disruptions in supply chains. Our response to this must not be to dismantle environmental protections. In fact, the disruption in supply chains seen following the invasion of Ukraine and the pandemic as well as the frequency of climate change-related flooding and droughts, has shown the necessity for greater focus on resilient, climate-adapted and mitigating farming solutions. I'm glad to read in this opinion the focus on promoting organic farming and sustainably reducing the reliance upon fertilizers. In relation to the latter, we know reliance upon it leaves us vulnerable to supply chain and price disruption and also has impacts on climate through its production and biodiversity through its use. What we need to focus on now is ensuring that we help farmers transition to climate mitigating and adaptive solutions and relocalization of production in a way that is sustainable and well mapped out. Farmers must also be able to secure fair payment for their produce, as Ms. Gomez has highlighted, and particular supports must be aimed at providing stable incomes to small farmers. 
and hopefully offsetting the loss of farmers that we have seen as highlighted by the Commissioner. Finally, I'm glad that this opinion acknowledges the need to support vulnerable people from the effects of increased food prices. With the current cost of living crisis, it is important that we protect our citizens from food poverty. However, I think in a broader sense, and going well beyond the scope of this opinion, we need to be working to create societies wherein none of our citizens are ever left vulnerable to food poverty or poverty indeed of any kind. Thank you. Thank you. Member Gonzalez Gonzalez, one minute. Muy buenas tardes, querido colegas. Thank you very much. Commissioner, I want to say thank you so much for being here with us today and for taking part in this discussion as we talk about these challenges we're facing. Like all previous speakers, I mean, I think we all agree we clearly have to support the livestock farming and farming sectors. We know that they are facing real uh, dangers and we need uh, to extend uh, farming to uh, more land use and also to more numbers. We need new farmers, younger farmers. The Commission needs to work on solutions that will uh, provide help to producers. We need to work on various fronts and we need to do so urgently. The countries affected are affected by Ukraine, but we're also being affected by the effects of climate change. And of course, climate change has a clear effect on uh, production. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your intervention. Now I'll give the floor to Member Fernandez Viana. You have the floor for one minute. Muchas gracias, President. Thank you very much, Chair. Commissioner, colleagues, talking about a food crisis and food security is really uh, interesting, especially from the local point of view and uh, the support that we can provide, also action taken by member states. I just want to introduce something into the debate, which is food waste. Sustainability means that we have to use our food, and local authorities need to uh, have an opportunity because they're close to uh, consumers, so they can focus on uh, lessening food waste, as well as guaranteeing food security of all people. In Cantabria, we've had a campaign over three years uh, looking at uh, raising awareness against uh, food waste and uh, about the circular economy. We focused a lot on the importance of consumption and local consumption of regional products, as well as uh, a need to buy um, seasonal products, and also focusing on how to uh, reduce the number of food that ends up in the trash. And in turn, this also helps support the circular economy. Thank you. Minute. Thank you, President. Thank you, Commissioner, for attending our meeting. And thank you also to my friend Piotr Kalbeski for taking on board uh, all of the amendments that we've suggested. You took one on board uh, completely, and uh, the other three you took on board, the spirit and objective in relation uh, to uh, terrace cultivation, uh, perennial crops, uh, 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 livestock, um, and last but not least, also uh, the PDOs, PGIs, and GIs. Uh, we need to make sure that we have uh, sufficient resources for everyone uh, and sufficient food, but we also need to protect uh, quality. Now, the Commissioner said that 80 companies a day are disappearing, and that's a worrying figure. Uh, about 4% of the active population in the EU is involved in farming, but that 4% manages about 70% of the territory, uh, manages and uh, does upkeep uh, on 70% of the territory. And if we lose that, we lose a part of our territory too. Thank you. Chair, one minute. Gracias, President. Agradezco mucho. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to take the floor. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Andalusia, and um, uh, obviously this is something we're all uh, aware about. We know that uh, we need our farmers uh, to guarantee food security in Europe, but we also know what the situation is. We're facing a crisis, and energy prices are un rising uncontrollably, and uh, and all of that makes it more difficult to ensure our food security, not just in terms of production, but also in terms of um, profitability for the producers. The crisis situation that we're facing, well, the measures to deal with that uh, do help uh, the sector, but they're not enough. 
I'm not just thinking about EU. We need to think beyond uh, EU as well. We need to look at possibly at the possible extension of the uh, conflict over time, and we need to uh, deal with this on a broader basis, therefore. I think it's essential that we work together to support farmers and uh, to ensure food security in the future. Thank you. Bruno Ranić, you have the floor for one minute. Uh, Dear colleagues, when we're talking about the food crisis today, it shouldn't only be linked to the war in Ukraine that produces uh, a lot of food, but uh, we should look at it as, as a crisis of increasing energy prices and fertilizer prices. And also we have cases of uh, food traders who artificially increase prices. In the EU, we have to make sure that we uh, have stronger control and sanctions for such traders. Uh, with the um, food price increases, not only there is less demand, but people buy food of lesser quality, which can have an adverse effect on health of people and cause problems in the health system. This uh, consequently can lead to, to higher costs in the EU. Thank you. Igor Androvich, one minute. Thank you. The war in Ukraine and the crisis that's affecting all of us should not result in the lack of agricultural products and in the lack of food. But what we do see is that we have price increases. Local producers are not in a good position. But all the interventions that come from the EU... Uh, should be commended because they are used to help our producers to stay producing. However, we have to mention the climate change that we're witnessing over the last couple of years. This is something that affects our producer through droughts, through storms, and this is something that additionally causes troubles for food production. In the Virovitica county, we use funds from the EU uh, to uh, reduce risks for our farmers uh, in order to have public irrigation systems and in order to have other types of protection for our farms. That gives us security and competitiveness in food production. And I hope that the EU will continue to uh, put money into such projects. Joško Klisovic, one minute. Russian aggression against Ukraine on the EU food chain system clearly show the urgent need to shape a more resilient Europe, protected from external shocks. In doing so, and in ensuring that food safety, we can't lower our health or quality standards, as well as risk exchanging one crisis for another. This is very important. In addition, Europe should reduce food waste if we really want sustainability. It must be clear that the right way forward is pursuing the objectives of the farm to fork and biodiversity strategy within the European Green Deal, Full involvement of local suppliers in this endeavor is crucial for the success, as well as for setting up emergency stocks and boosting more diverse local food production, which would in turn offer more resilience to external shocks. Equally important in this context is reducing the environmental and climate footprint on the EU food system, ensuring food security in the face of climate change and biodiversity loss. Thank you. Nikola Dobrovslavic. One minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me thank uh, Commissioner Wojciechowski uh, on the way how he approached this issue. Let me thank MEP Mortner and the colleague Kalbecki for a wonderful opinion on this issue. The agricultural policy is the basic policy of the EU. And we see that food is used as a means uh, to wage war by Russia in their brutal aggression on Ukraine. And it shows how right we were when we issued our opinion in the Committee of the Regions about uh, the multi-annual financial framework and we insisted to defend uh, the, the CAP and we were against cutting uh, funds to the CAP. Just like the European Commission is trying to find solutions to food security, uh, uh, 
we should continue doing so. The Committee of the Regions uh, will be your allies in that respect. One minute. Geachte Eurocommissaris, dank voor uw komst. Commissioner, thank you for coming along to our meeting. Both for reasons of food security and our climate, we need to make sure that we can transition towards sustainable farming systems. And the war has made it clear that we need to ratchet up our efforts uh, towards sustainability. We need a system that is good for soil, water and climate, but also for the business model of our farmers, a system where the costs are uh, distributed proportionally across all of the various parts of the chain. And in the Netherlands, we would ask your attention for circular production, a protein transition. Uh, we want plant-based proteins, and that allows us to use less, fewer pesticides, and we can make sure that the world has healthy and sustainable food. Jaroslaw Stawiarski, one minute. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I come from the Lublin region, which is directly neighboring Ukraine. And just as Ukraine, we have very fertile soils, and we produce healthy food, just as they do in Ukraine. The question is, what can we do to increase our food production and ensure food security to the citizens of Europe and, in a sense, the citizens of the world? Well, in my opinion, what we need to do is to increase the level of activity of local and regional governments. First of all, what we should do is to change the common agricultural policy of the European Union. We should adjust it to the global challenges. We should disburse more funds for the CAP. And the common agricultural policy of the EU should be flexible to allow regions to have more uh, influence of where the funds are directed. It is the region that can uh, give a resounding effect to the CAP and ensure more resilience. Thank you. One minute. Tisztelt biztos úr, elnök úr, hölgyeim és uraim! A kialakult krízis egyaránt veszélye... Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, this crisis is putting in peril the food security in the EU and we need to do our utmost to have stability in Ukraine, and we must deploy all efforts to make sure that the uh, Black Sea Agreement uh, can be maintained, and we need uh, transport corridors. We really need to do our best uh, to make sure that Ukraine can continue exporting its agricultural produce. Transports uh, towards Hungary and across Hungary have uh, increased, and we've made significant investments to beef up capacity uh, at border control posts. At the same time, we also need to uh, bear in mind sustainability. We need to, to continue to be a, a net exporter in the EU, and of course, The significant increase in energy prices is something that has affected us greatly and something there needs to be done uh, soon. Tobias Gotthard, one minute. Commissioner, President, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Motler for what she said. She said that Europe's uh, uh, farming is a treasure, an asset that we uh, need to set great store by. Our farmers stand for culture, resilience, biodiversity, and I think all of the political groups have made the point that farmers are our partners. Uh, not our opponents. And if I look at the global market, and even though I'm in favor of the global market when it comes to food, I think uh, it's best to look at our own markets first. Thank you very much. We've been told about the increase in fertilizer prices, the fact that uh, there's a lack of food, and there's a food crisis, and there are problems with the food supply chain. And I think 
developing activities in mountainous regions might be a solution. You don't need heavy machinery there or fertilizers, and you can produce healthier food. Uh, and my uh, proposal and question are as follows. Can't we uh, do away with red tape and reduce bureaucracy? It's difficult to obtain uh, funds for farmers in these areas, and uh, they tell us it's almost impossible to have access to funding, and only 24% of the funds have been taken up by the farmers. Nope. Now this concludes the debate from the floor. Thank you so much for... Yes. Ivan Luk, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. I am very happy that we're talking about this. I just wanted to draw your attention to a simple thing, and I welcome the fact that it was mentioned by, by, both by the Commissioner and Mr. Tsaubetsky. Countryside is not only agriculture. You mentioned uh, infrastructure in the EU uh, where 70% of the territory is agricultural land. In Poland, it's over 90%. Uh, a huge um, percentage of our population actually lives in rural areas. And in fact, the rural areas, most rural areas get depopulated. But we need people to live in the countryside to be able to work the land. We are partners as local and regional authorities to take such action. We need to reflect on that. This is highly necessary. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other requests from the floor. This, is, this concludes our debate. Thank you so much for this important discussion an important debate. This is a very, very important matter for Europe, for regions, including for my region, the Azores, mainly agricultural region. Now I will give the floor to Commissioner to react in two minutes. Will that be enough for you? More than time, right? I see you agree. You have the floor for two weeks. If you permit, at least five minutes, that's what I would need. Five minutes, because this is really something that raises um, a lot of passions. Very briefly, Ukraine, we've done a lot to support export from Ukraine, especially to the countries of North Africa, Middle East, because this is important from the perspective of food security, and this needs to be kept up. But thank you very much to all the speakers who said that Russia is, in fact, weaponizing food or it's weaponizing lack of food. It is a consistent activity. Uh, Russia is destructing, is destroying the food potential, food-producing potential in Ukraine in a very consistent manner. And I think that we should all be prepared for the worst, because now we, the problem is how to export a grain from Ukraine. Tomorrow the problem might be how to transport food into Ukraine. Those um, historic parallels to the Hlodomor are not really unfounded. We need to be prepared for the worst. So we need to take care of food production in the European Union. I all I agree with you. There were some questions on the Green Deal, on agriculture, the links between that. We have drawn our conclusions from the change reality. Our goals with respect to the Green Deal are political deals, goals, political targets. They, they are not obligatory for farmers. Some of these targets might have been risky with respect to food production. We decided to suspend them, for example, excluding uh, certain areas from production or uh, obligatory crop rotation. Crop rotation is needed, but when we are lacking grain, we decided to give our farmers carte blanche so that they can act accordingly. This is something that we've done. But we are not giving up on the diversification of agricultural production. Ms. Bauer said about um, bioproduction, agricultural production. If we develop uh, bioproduction, this will not be a threat to food security because in many farms, especially the smallest farms, 
they have a very simple choice. Either they become a biofarm or they won't produce at all because these small, small farms in those difficult market conditions are not able to compete as far as conventional agri-food production is concerned. But they can be very good competitors with respect to bio uh, production. So we should support sustainable production, bioproduction. This is something that goes hand in hand. And, uh, Chairman, if I may, one more thing that I wanted to refer to, the financing of the uh, common agricultural policy, not port, not point four percent of the GDP is uh, used for the CAP. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for caring for the common agricultural policy that it is financed sufficiently. Thank you much for your insights. Now the floor goes to MEP Marlene Mortler for two minutes. Thank you very much, President. Let me dispel a misunderstanding straight away. Healthy food can be found in conventional and in organic farming. But it's important for plants with nutrients to be harvested. Uh, we as people need sufficient nutrients. The same goes for plants. And we need to protect plants when plants are, are diseased, when certain thresholds are exceeded. And it's important for us uh, to protect plants so as to have good crops. We take medicines, uh, and you could compare uh, plants to that. Now, this year we're celebrating the 60th uh, anniversary of the CAP, and when all of this got started, we said, uh, never again war, never again hunger. Uh, now, in the meantime, our bellies are full. Uh, we no longer see the connection between all of this, how all of this uh, is produced. And uh, it is important to bear this in mind. And it's important to ask yourself, where do I buy? How do I buy? What do I buy? How do I feed myself? And it starts uh, uh, at home, really. And if you can't manage it at home, you can't manage it uh, at a larger, on a larger scale. And the environment and food production are not diametrically opposed. We work on this. I mean, and in. Uh, Farms, sometimes you used to see uh, things which uh, luckily are now confined to the past, but we need to provide advice to farmers, and they want to do their, their best. We have the know-how, the knowledge here in the EU, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, thank you for listening uh, to me, but I really uh, look forward to having many allies on our side. Now, finally, I give the floor to the Rapporteur for reaction. Two minutes. Thank you very much for participating in this debate. It showed me even more areas of subjects that we perhaps haven't discussed in our opinion enough. Um, I'd like to when you, I liked it, I liked it when you said that um, a farm was kind of a firm. Yes, it's a firm that gives a job to the entire family. Without a family, you wouldn't have um, environmental protection. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has always been farmers who protected the environment. They were they always tried to slow down the um, influence of the humans on nature. Local and regional authorities have always tried to organize their round tables there to protect farmers, to protect um, supply chains. And at the same time, 
remembering that farming is a source of life and of culture. Agriculture is derived from that word. So let's bear in mind that when we think about small farms that are disappearing now in Europe, if we forget about them, we'll lose after some time, not just food security, but we'll even forget what Europe should be about. Let's really try to do our best to avoid that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Commissioner, for your presence here with us during this day. Thank you, uh, MEP for uh, Mortler, for being here with us. I wish you a good afternoon, a good rest of the day, and uh, thank you for uh, being with us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's proceed. We 